So kicking off the agenda, I want to just say welcome. And I'm Melissa Jones, the vice chair for the Region 3 SAC. And the first thing we're going to do is motion, see if anybody would like to approve the agenda for tonight. Has everybody had a chance to look at it? So moved. Second it. All right, we got Dawn, Kristen. All in favor, approving the agenda? Looks like positive affirmation from all of our SAC members. So we'll consider the agenda approved for tonight. Uh, our next bit is to move into open public comment. We thought moving the public comment to the very beginning would allow for everybody to kind of set the tone. If anybody has anything they want to say about their particular application or part of the region that we're looking at, then we can just kick off with the public comments. So Patrick, do you have anybody? We have three, four attendees um, waiting in the wings. So if any of the attendees would like to um, speak during this uh, public comment process, if you would please raise your hand and I will, I can call on you. So we've got one and this is, this is Phil Hager. Um, Phil, can you hear us? Yes, I can. Okay, you've got two minutes. Go ahead. All right, I have two uh, two to talk about. Do I get two minutes for each? Um, sh sure. <laughs> Great. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. Thank you for providing an opportunity to advocate on behalf of my clients. Again, my name is Phil Hager of Hager Land Use Consulting. At your last meeting, you discussed two properties that had submitted zoning applications. The first is 7237 Ritchie Highway in Glen Burnie. In your review, you discussed some of the considerations associated with the request for C4, but you opted to recommend that the property remain C3. <clears throat> the property is currently a Sitco gas station. Uh, this use exists by virtue of a special exception. It's legally entitled to operate as such and to continue to operate as such. The problem for the landowner comes in when the lease expires. Most of the large franchise operations are reluctant to deal with properties that operate as non-conforming uses or as special exceptions because of the risk. My client wants to maintain a first-rate operation and does not want to become rundown or an eyesore to the neighborhood. Without a national branded gas franchise, they will be forced to go with an independent or an off-brand gasoline tenant. These companies are not as willing to reinvest in their properties, and, and it's not going to keep this property to the level that we'd like to see it in this particular area. Also, these independents don't usually have the capital resources to reinvest into upgrades and renewals. In defense of the large franchise operations, they know that operating as a special exception is not a sure thing, and that improvements are not always permissible without having to go through a special exception process, and that sometimes even things like new fascia and canopies can trigger the need for a special exception. These are time consuming, expensive, and not always improved, approved. For all intents and purposes, this property is operating as a C4 property and they have no desire to change their, their use. They just want to protect their investment and to continue to offer their services to the people of Glen Burnie and the Route 2 corridor. I'm respect respectfully requesting that you reopen deliberations on this application and consider rezoning it to C4. Okay, so and you with the second. Sure, yes. sure. That was that was about two minutes. So you've got about that much time. Great, thank you very much. The second property is located at one zero zero Crane Highway. As you may recall, the property is split zone C three C four. The request was to make the entire property C four. The owners have had the opportunity to develop the property as C three under existing conditions, but they have been unsuccessful in finding a, a tenant willing to do so. A designation of C4 would permit a diversity of uses not allowed in the C3 and would generate sufficient financial incentive to encourage the appropriate redevelopment of this property. Reducing the portion of the property that is already zoned C4 to C3 takes away a portion of the property's value and restricts its ability to be redeveloped. In your discussions, you noted the desire to try to maintain the C4 zone south of Aquahart. This is a worthy objective. However, the C4 zoning already exists well north of Aquahart, so that particular horse is already out of the stable. 
There's an opportunity, however, to create an urban growth boundary immediately north of this property to achieve your goal of actually of, of constraining the C4. If one looks at the existing development footprint, there's a residential subdivision immediately north of this property, and the open space uh, property associated with this residential subdivision goes all the way to Crane Highway. This open space would be ideally situated to provide a buffer between the commercial development to the south and the existing residential development. This action makes sense from a planning perspective. It protects the property owner's rights and encourages new development, which will provide jobs, services, and revenue for the owner, as well as the county. Without this change, the property will not make, be able to achieve its potential and could very well become a blight upon the landscape of this corridor. As with the other property, I'm respectfully requesting that you reopen deliberations and consider zoning the entire parcel C4. Thank you. Thank you, Phil. Phil I'd be happy to take any questions if there are any. Addresses one more time. Uh, the second property was 1003 Crane Highway. The first property was 7237 Ritchie Highway. Okay, thank you. 7 Do we have anybody else um, from the public who would like to offer any comments for two minutes? And if so, please raise your hand. And I am not seeing any, any hands raised. So at this point, uh, Jason, if you want to take, take over at this point, and if you want to close the public comment, session uh, all right do we need a motion to close the public comment we just close the public comment and move on to the i think you can just close it all right uh we've now ended the public comment uh period of the meeting um and we'll proceed on to the agenda which just closed for me uh, <laughs> <laughs> just closed randomly um i yeah, I can pick it up if you're if you're comfortable yeah. with that because it's pretty much just completing continuing with the same in the same vein that we have done for the last several meetings, um, trying to complete going through these zoning and planned land use recommendations. So if you'd like, I can just share my screen and we'll get started on that. Yes, please. Okay. Go over the vision statement again, Patrick. Yes, please. Yeah, okay. I, do that, please. Okay, let me show Okay, can everyone see that? <clears throat> yes. Okay. okay, so just to review our vision statement for Region 3 is Region 3 is an adaptive community network which balances the economic, social, and environmental needs of the residents. All people can attain desirable housing, earn a decent living, and enjoy a healthy natural environment with diverse opportunities for education, recreation, entertainment, and social engagement. Businesses serve the community and enrich its network of goods and services. Convenient, affordable public transportation and safe biking and walking paths are available modes of transportation offering green options to mitigate the effects of climate change. Plans for development are transparent to the public with opportunities for public engagement. Residents are happy to live here and feel a sense of belonging to the larger community. Okay, thank you for that. So with that, I'm gonna continue, um, I try to pick up where we left off. Give me one second to share my screen. Um, there we go. Can you all see my screen? Yes. Okay. Um, we had we left off talking about the Marley Neck Peninsula, and we got about about halfway down. So I'm going to pick up where we left off on what I'm 
or tonight at least, I'm calling this the inner Marley Neck area. So sort of below this, there's a BG&E right of way that, that run out through here. So to the south of that and Nabs Creek Road. Um, and what I'll do is just like I did last time, I'll try to give you sort of an overview of of the area and all of the, the key changes that we're recommending in this area. Um, and I guess at that point, um, we can dig into it a little bit deeper, start to answer any questions that you all might have. Um, but really this whole area, so I'm gonna be talking about all of this down to the Marley Neck, um, uh, Marley Station Mall. And this whole area is within the neighborhood preservation development policy area, except for this Marley Station Mall area, which is uh, within the critical corridor, this the mall itself and the commercial areas around the mall. And I think for our purposes tonight, kind of the main area of discussion will probably be this area, but let me zoom in up here and just kind of walk you through some of the key the key changes up in this area. So the first one I'll talk about is um, there's actually a, there are a lot of consistency changes throughout this area. A lot of them have to do with realigning um, with a policy that was adopted in plan 2040, sort of realigning the way that the open space zoning has been applied. Um, so that takes care of a lot of um, what you're seeing and then kind of, um, uh, uh, fixing some of the alignment of of zoning changes on parcel lines so that we're matching parcel lines. There is um, sort of a larger consistency change here where this um, currently undeveloped property, I think there's a, I think there's one um, building in the center of this here. This is all currently zoned R10 residential. We're recommending that that be rezoned to W1. That's consistent with the industrial planned land use that was already adopted for that property during plan 2040. Um, in terms of uh, zoning, uh, comprehensive zoning amendments, these two here are the first that I'll talk about, GBN 0013 and 14. And both of these, and in my mind, I'm gonna say that they're, they really are more like zoning district line corrections, but these were requests by the owner. So they show up on that layer of, um, of comprehensive zoning applications. This puts the full site into the W1 uh, zoning category, really removing just a sliver of RLD zoning that um, kind of wanders onto the back of the property on the east side here. So, so that's... Um, that's that one. If I can walk you down Nabs Creek Road, there's a large area here that is, uh, if you, if I can turn on the um, property lines here, uh, there's a large area that's been, uh, that was subdivided, I think back in the 60s to, um, to a lot of these very small lots. And the owner of of all of these that are in gray here, they, so all of this is currently zoned RLD, but um, the owner has requested R5 zoning. Um, our recommendation has been to keep the RLD zoning uh, as that's consistent with the surrounding RLD zoning um, to, the, to the north and the west of it. And it's even lower open space zoning to the to the east and the south. Um, but um, we would note that assuming that these lots could connect to some existing water and sewer mains, um, that because they are existing platted lots, they do have some development rights. But they would like they would probably require being uh, some of those lots being merged in order to actually develop with houses. And there are a couple of houses that are developed within this area already, but for the most part, this is largely undeveloped. Um, Patrick, we have a question from Joanne. Yes, Joanne, go ahead. Yeah, Patrick, during the actual in-person meetings, I always had guides to look at. So I'm gonna have to ask you, what's the RLD mean again? 
uh, residential low density um, oh, okay. zoning. And yeah, the, thank you. And the, and the request is to make it what? R5. So it would it would be quite a jump to oh. five five units per acre, which is in our in our thinking, that's that's not something that is um that you see out on this peninsula. This area here is R2, so two units per acre. Uh that's the the zoning that's already applied there, but R5 seemed a little bit much of a jump for us. Is R5 in the category of some of those um, mid-category housing options that we were introduced to, like a cluster of cottages around an open space or something like that, or is it beyond that? It it can be. So it's about it's about five five units per acre. A lot of our single family um, residential neighborhoods are are R5. I mean, R, R2 is, you know, lower density, but R5, um, when you get up into R10, that's when you start to get into some of your townhomes. And I'm speaking in very broad terms here, but. Mm -hmm. So you wanted to keep it RLD to reduce yeah. the density of population? Um, and, and the just looking at the infrastructure in this area, there's, um, and the fact that this area or, or these these lots are already platted and there is some development potential just based on that. Mm -hmm. So there was a question in the chat from Sarah about what is the equivalent zoning of the existing lots? Is that RLD or? Yeah, RLD is what's existing on these on these lots. What's the traffic like in that area? Let me give you, let me pull up a, um, can you all see Google Maps here? Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is, this is the road and on the right is the, this is the area that we're talking about. So it's on, it's undeveloped, but a, a narrow, you know, two lane road here. Desiree, you had done most of the research on this. Is there any more to add here? I think you covered it. Um, yeah, I don't think I know more than anything than what you've already said. Um, yeah, just that, yeah, those, those lots are already platted. So that was a consideration we thought about, but um, yeah, I, just that R5 was, was, kind of too big of a jump in terms of that existing area and, and the compatibility of that small road as well. Do you know what size lots are platted? Are they 20 by 100 or 25 by 100? No, I don't, I don't have don't a measurement know. tool. Let me see. If you'll bear with me, I can, I'll measure this real quick. This, it seems like this was a, a thing that was done back in the 60s and earlier to plot out these or plat these narrow. Um, is Green Haven, Carrollton Manor. I mean, most, a lot of our older subdivisions were done with the mm -hmm. 20, and, and that's, four, 20 and 25 foot wide lots. Yeah. So that's what we have here is 25 feet wide. But how many would it take in RLD to make? A building site. How many of the twenty-five footers? We Does have anybody. Do you know, Sarah and Selma? Would you would you be able to weigh in on that from the zoning perspective? I put you on the spot. <laughs> no, it's not a problem. Um, but it is already subdivided. So when you talk about a minimum lot width, it's for subdivision purposes typically. So lots that exist can still be developed if they aren't meeting that minimum lot width requirement. I don't know. Is there public sewer here? I don't know enough about these properties specifically. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's in the planned service area, but planned. So they may yeah. then be, be required to merge the lots if they were contiguous to and under the same ownership as 
one or more unimproved lots. Um, and then they would have to then meet the minimum width that would be required at subdivision. So that would be for RLD, give me one sec, 150, 150 feet. But it would have to do with the 20 acres or the five acres or anything like that under RLD. Well, so aren't you, and I don't typically take these applications, so I apologize for not having it all at the ready, but typically if it's not served by public water and sewer, then there's the criteria that they be merged with as many lots as possible to come as close to or to meet the minimum width and area. So, right, right. you're saying you wouldn't have to necessarily it's not necessarily limited to the one per five anymore, but you would have to have the 40,000 square feet that's required for RLD and the 150 feet in width. Does that make sense? Yeah. I mean, but the, it just, but the density it just, limitation would it doesn't really down. apply because the lots are already there. How long ago is it zoned RLD? Has I don't it been have that information. I mm -hmm. long Do you recall that, Desiree? I mean, there's a you're still going to have to combine lots even if it's R2 or R5. It's just you'll get more lots. So it's up to the stakeholders group to us as to what our opinion is. Do you want to see more development on Nabs Creek Road um, or do you want to leave it that they have all those lots from the 60s that they really have to combine and probably get a couple houses versus, you know, a bunch more houses. So do we, for our mission statement, where do we want the development to be? Yeah, yeah I think the, the, that's that's really helpful. I was going to ask for that context because I figured your question is really leading that way. Um, for this plan, if I, we don't have the street view of, but I think it, this area is not like a densely developed area or is it one of the areas that's getting the new sub developments? It didn't seem like it. Well, mm -hmm. you go, you go down that road and everything on the um, left that Patrick shows you are pretty or are, are, are decent sized lots in the midst of those trees that you can see. Mm -hmm. And they're, they're fairly decent. But when you go to the end of the peninsula, it's, it's a lot more dense. It's back to the 25 foot lots. The whole mm -hmm. peninsula is back to 25 foot lots and the peninsula next to it. Yeah, so you're talking about at the kind of at the uh, along the water's edge at the end yeah. of some of these roads. So Locust Grove and then oh, what is this Francis Road? Um, yeah. I would say, <clears throat> OK, I'm understanding that RLD would allow each house a little bit more land around it than the R5. Um, and if that is correct, I support the RLD for two reasons. One is, um, if we have low density housing, we're more likely to pre preserve at least some of those trees that I saw on the lot. And we do need trees for mental and physical health. Um, and the second one is it's a two lane road and, uh, you know, two way and to add a whole lot of more density there than was originally planned seems to me not a very good idea considering um, the road that it goes along. So I support the RLD, assuming that means that each house would have a little bit more land around it for up to allow for trees and um, not as many people living on the same piece of land. Uh, Patrick, we've been got, kind of going through them. Are we going to vote them these as the group and then break it up if we need to? Is that what the plan is? Um, what is your thought? Should I continue going through this and kind of talking big picture, taking questions as I go and then come back for a vote? Or do you want to go ahead and vote on the ones that we just talked about and then move forward? What's your so read on what's best? How many total do we have remaining? Um, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
I've got about 10 more that I want to talk about to get us to Marley Station Mall and then okay. just a handful in Southern Glen Burnie. Okay. Uh, Speaking from my own area. brain, I'd like to take one or two at a time for processing purposes. That's fair. Unless they're, they're, they're packed together, like there's three in this, like one yeah. stack. Yeah. Are there okay. any more in this immediate area? I see some, like the one below the property. Is that one? Um, well, so oh, the, re the rest of these out in this area are, are consistency changes. So aligning with what was adopted with plan 2040, aligning okay. with property lines. Um, those are kind of the key. You, there are a lot of dotted lines, but really that's what all of these changes in this area boil down to. Mm -hmm. um, so we've talked about, we've talked about, that's kind of a key consistency change, but it is still just a consistency change. And then we've talked about these three um, uh, applications. Do we want to go ahead and take a vote on those three? Yeah. Yes. Move on. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, so, do I have a motion to vote on the three properties that we just reviewed um, to accept the um, OPZ's recommendations or to review them individually, I guess. And if we review them individually, then we can go at the individual uh, recommendations. Does anybody need me to read all three recommendations? I can give it to you again real quick. This this was a consistency change to W1. Both of these extended W1 to the full property. This recommended retaining RLD. And I will note that the first two smaller ones, the, 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 the horizontal ones, W1 is what was requested by the homeowner. Yes. Uh, so it's consistent with what the homeowner is requesting. The only difference from what the homeowner is requesting is the one, the larger property that looks like an L. Yeah, that 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 one there. Mm -hmm. Are we taking a vote then uh, with our yeah. hands or on the chat or how are we going to do this? Um, let's do um, let's use the raise hand feature. All those in favor or. Do we have that feature activated? Maybe not. Uh, oh, do we not? Uh, yeah, it, it, it is. My view to, um... oh, wait, oh. Okay, I see people now. All those in favor? You can raise your hand or, just ra or raise your hand on the screen. It's fine too. All those opposed? Got everybody? We have one opposed. I only oppose, I'm sorry. Rich, I only oppose the RLD for the 25 foot lots. The consistency change and the owner wanting the W1 is fine. I in agreement of that. But the one where all the lots were created years ago by the developer, a developer, and the county allowed it to be recorded. I mean, I think there should be a compromise. I mean, either R2 or R5. I, I don't I mean, you got the park next door, um, so you have a lot of green area around it. Mm. If we need housing in in our area, that may be. I mean, it's already it's already platted lots. They're not going to get a house on every one of the lots, mm. but RLD is going to, in my opinion, um, is going to severely restrict that air that development that piece for development versus. Uh, an R2 or R5, but that's that's my opinion, and that's why I voted against remaining that as RLD. They so, will have to go through a subdivision process to combine lots, I believe. So it's not like all of a sudden you can start getting building permits. There will be, you know, the test for the county and that type of thing for adequacy of facilities, roadways, and all that kind of stuff. Um, but I really don't know, and I can't speak to what the difference. I know the difference in de density from R RLD to R two to R five is a pretty. Both of them are pretty good sized jumps, but these are already recorded lots. 
they can do but i i it would have been it'd be nice to know is how many houses are we talking about but it's too definitive for this group um mm. for us to understand that mm. i don't understand what black. we could do today like i think we're all in agreement today if they went to try and build something they couldn't build on every single little lot but would they today have to meet RLD even though they have all of those lots documented? Yeah, according to zoning, um, they just stated that if they have to meet the RLD, which was, I think, 40,000 square foot per lot and um, 150. 150. Right. So they wouldn't necessarily have the one per five acres at that point because 40,000 square feet is just under an acre. So you could kind of loosely look at it as roughly a house per acre in that instance. So to give you an idea, if people are interested, if you take the whole subdivision on a very rough, it is a, is it actually 26 acres? Well, I've got 20 acres in our data. Yeah. Well, then that's about right. So 20 acres. So mm -hmm. it is an issue. That you that they could possibly if zoning is that they could get somewhat what about twenty uh that'd be about twenty units depending on rec area and everything else they have to meet, but if you did do R two, it could be fifteen thousand square foot lots if they have public order and sewer, so it would be, you know, two two point something so you could increase it to forty units, so R five might be a little aggressive in my opinion, but at least the compromise is a, is an is an idea. Okay. So why don't we do this? Why don't we separate that one property out and I'll redo the motion and then that way we can address that one property since that seems that to, to be a different uh, thought process. Um, so if I can have a, um, a move all, all those in favor of accepting OPC's recommendation for the first two horizontal properties and the consistency change that is in the upper left or the, of the screen. Uh, all those in favor, you can raise your hand via the reactions through Zoom or just raise your hand on the screen. That's fine, too. <laughs> Give it a moment. Okay. All right. All, all those opposed, if, if everybody can lower their hands, that's the issue with the reactions. It takes time to lower and raise your hands. Um, all those opposed? All right, I don't think we have okay. anyone opposed. So if we wanna move on to the, to the next property, which is uh, GBN0015, um, all those in favor of accepting OPC's recommendation to uh, retain RLD. Um, raise your hand. I see seven people. Eight. Yeah. Okay. And then if you want to lower your hands, see the reactions. Um, all those um, in favor of the homeowner's request of R5, you can raise your hand at this point. So I see one for two for R5. Okay. All right. I would note that it should be R, that I would say R two, just if if it matters. Oh, as a as a, as a secondary option. So we have one for R two. One for R two. And M Michelle was R five, so that's three three for R five, one for R two, eight for or seven for OPZ <laughs> recommendation. Is that right? I believe so. That was that was the count I was getting to. Okay. 
So right. where does that leave us according to the policies if it's seven on to support the recommendation and seven with other ideas? Uh, and that kind of- uh, Is that 60? It's supposed to be a two thirds Two -thirds, yeah. decision on a policy so is that what's the math on that i think we <laughs> should nope, keep voting until we <laughs> no it's <laughs> this this would end up a, a no consensus one because you're you're not quite at you're not at two-thirds well, we, have, we have 20 on the call right and there's four opz staff members i believe and so that would be 16 so seven would be well, there, there, are th there are only 13 members of the committee. One, two, three, four, okay. five, six, seven, eight. Well, we've got 11 here. 12, I see. Oh, yeah, 11. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. So there are 11 of you, 13 total, but of the group tonight, seven. Oh, so I, I did the math wrong then. Yeah, that's. That's good. That's right, right? Six, that's over two thirds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. You're right. It's sixty three point six three. Yeah. It's not quite two thirds. <laughs> Just pointing out in case it Thank mattered. you. Sure. <laughs> okay. Oh yeah. You can just count my vote twice if you want. <laughs> it's okay. I mean, I mean, there. We're not expecting consensus on everything, and that's that's fine. Um, this discussion will be noted in the in the meeting notes, so we we appreciate it. So should we should we move on down Solly Road? Yes. Okay. All right. So the um, the area I'll go to next is. Um, I'll highlight this um, GBN um, one one zero, um, and then one one eleven over uh, further down here. So this one is a this is kind of a um, zoning line correction. You can see the zoning line uh, ran through the middle of the property, splitting the property into W one and W two. So our recommendation GBN one ten applies W2 to the full property. Um, getting down here to uh, GBN uh, 111, um, this applies one zoning C4 to this, this right of way. It's really kind of a right of way parcel that's privately owned that's just north of North Shore Forest right here. Um, I'll also point out, um, We've got some planned land use and zoning changes. So associated here, um, this, this we're recommending both a change in planned land use from industrial to commercial, and that's consistent with the existing use and the zoning, and it corrects a, a zoning split to all C4 on, on this property here. Um, in this area, we've got North Shore Forest, and um, so, so these two residential communities here, and then the rear of of this property here, we um, are recommending that all of that change from C three and in this case C four to R five. That's consistent both with the built condition of these. So you'll see that these are platted as um, as townhome units, but they're they're built at a um, an R five scale so we're recommending r5 here and then also on this uh, piece back here again consistent with what is built there and then the so those are kind of the main um changes in this area that i wanted to point out and the rest of these are um are just your general consistency changes um that align with planned land use and the policies set forth in plan 2040 um, do we want to stop there or keep going into some of the other uh, applications that are further down? Is there any discussion I, on those? I have a question, Patrick. Okay, sure. Um, the C4 is, it appears to be like right in the middle of big residential mm -hmm. area. That's, there's no freeway there, or commercial highway area. So do you know more about why that would be? What that C4? is? 
That's right in the middle of. Yeah, not... it's an existing, it's an existing business. Um, looks like a boat lift business. Uh, let me see if we have more in our spreadsheet on that. Um, bear with me. Uh, yeah, bear with me one second. Uh, yeah, it, it was, um, sorry, I'm trying to pull up some, some data here and it's being slow, but it was an attempt to, uh, to align, to align that with, um, with what's existing on the ground. And that's, that's what you can see here. And then the, the townhomes that were built on the, on the right and then to the left here. Mm. Patrick, one... this is Christina. Sure, go ahead. While you I'm still pulling this up. apply for a land use change during Plan 2040? I feel like he came and testified during the GDP. That's part of what I was trying to pull up here as well. Is this um, 7966 Sally Road? Because I have the Lucas spreadsheet up. It's seven, no, it's seven, um, seven, four, nine, two. Solly. Okay. But OPZ's recommendation is to make it R5? Is that what I'm seeing? Mm, no. Zero, so, so the, no, this first one, this first area would remain um, C4. Yeah, as you as you see there, um, it's the change is this this back area here where we're recommending that that go to R five and that like you see in the pop up here, it's consistent with the existing use there, and that's what I was trying to get at. It's a house that is back there. Let me pull this over to to here. So if I zoom in on the on this, you'll see a, a house here immediately behind this. Does that change any of the like screening requirements for that lot? It it might if if this were to come in for redevelopment. But not, not, not as it kick in. not as it stands today. If if they don't come in for any for any kind of redevelopment, then it's at that point that it would it would be required to change or to to comply with that. Mm -hmm. Sounds good to me. Okay. Are there any other questions about any anything in this in this area before I move down to some of these further south? How long has that house been there? We know. Gosh, I this one. Yeah, I mean, it, I'm just wondering if they like if they think they have C4 land that they're going to sell, you know, and then it gets rezoned. I don't know the answer to that, but they will get a letter that refers. So I'm looking at the 1990 map uh, aerial, Sorry. and and it's Patrick, there. They, the year built says 1958 on the SDAT record. If that can be trusted. Okay. Usually they're at least approximately right. Mm -hmm. But all of these where we're recommending a change, they will get a letter and mm -hmm. right. and will let us know if they don't agree with that or if there's other information that we aren't aware of. Yeah, that makes sense to do with it. Okay. Do you want to take a vote on this area so since we're here? Yes. Okay. Uh, all those, any objection to? Oh, all those in favor of accepting LPZ's recommendation for the changes, the consistency changes in this area, raise your hand. Two, three, four, I see applause. <laughs> I think that's everyone. Okay. All right. 
great. All right. Um, I'll move down here to um, GBN 0019. That's, this is on 17 um, Washington Avenue. This is an area, it's the whole surrounding neighborhood is R5 residential. Um, this person submitted an application requesting C1. Um, and the reason given was that they want to abandon their forest conservation um, that's that's pl platted on their property and they want to be able to build a unit for their aging father. Um, we we felt like zoning is not quite the right tool for what they're looking to do there. Um, we're recommending that they retain the R5 zoning and they they may be able to use the county's um, accessory dwelling unit provisions to mm -hmm. to be able to provide a, a um a unit for for her father. So we were recommending maintain R five there. Um, Outer Cove Road. So GBN zero zero twenty. This is uh at the end of a cul de sac, Sloops Cove Landing. If you're familiar with that neighborhood. Um, the zoning for this whole neighborhood is RLD. This person requested uh, mixed use MXD residential. Um, this also seemed to be a request to remove the forest conservation that's um, platted on their property. And again, zoning it not quite the right tool for what they're looking to do. And the mixed use zoning just is not compatible with this neighborhood. This is a platted neighborhood. Um, so we're recommending retain the RLD and um, and maybe have a conversation with this person about, about other options for them. Um, moving over to Lincoln Drive, if you're familiar with this, this is an area, This this is a sort of strange one. This is an isolated house that has R1 zoning and it's in the middle of a sea of R5. And the planner in me says that the the right recommendation for this would be to to make this R5 aligned with the rest of the neighborhood. This in prior comprehensive zoning rounds going back decades, literally, literally the owner had requested to retain the R1 zoning because um, he had horses and his family used used those horses. Um, I spoke with this owner now several weeks ago and he, he really isn't interested in changing the zoning to R5 at this point, I actually requested retaining the R1 zoning still, um, though he doesn't have those horses anymore. Um, so for right now, OPZ is recommending retaining the existing R1 zoning, and this would be a change in planned land use to uh, to change the land use back to low density residential. If we do that, I think I I would like to reach out to this person again at some point. Now that he's I've I've initiated that contact once, and and just see what the response would be. You know, uh, again, but. Um, as of right now, our recommendation has been to retain the R1 on that property and change the plan land use to align with that. And Patrick, did you, can I just ask out of curiosity, the sure. horses came into play with why he wanted the R1? Back, as in, if he couldn't... back in the SAP time frame, so early 2000s or late 90s, that was, yes. we've got I don't think at that time him. there would have been any restriction to have horses on R5, so I was just curious uh, why the horses were a factor, but never mind. That was, that was what the documentation uh, was, so that's, interesting. that's all okay. I know. But, but I, I was aware that currently that's not an issue anymore either, so that is a, a, a good point that you bring up. So, um, but the man, the man that wants R1, wants to retain R1, he owns the property, is that not right? Oh, of course, yes. So even if you change it to R5, nothing would happen if he didn't sell it for building. Uh, because he owns if, it. Meaning if he just sold his house as it is, I mean. No, I mean, if he just decided to stay put and didn't want anything to change, he wanted to have that land, 
nothing would be built on it until he sold it anyway, right? That's probably correct, yeah. Okay, because it's his property, so. What, what do you okay. mean, taxed more? I was just um, wondering why you would change somebody's property to another zoning um, category if they own that property and they were satisfied with the way it was. Well, from I mean, from a planning standpoint, this is this is it. It really stands out as as a strange R one piece of property in the middle of this giant sea of R five neighborhoods here, mm -hmm. and so that's that's why it, it and the planned land use was adopted with Plan twenty forty with um, low medium density residential applied to this property. So as a consistency change, it would automatically we would typically recommend go ahead and change this to R5. Um, so I, but in, in reaching out to this person before make, before doing that, that was the information that I got at that time. So the R5 would only be relevant when the man sold his property. Y yes. Unless he wanted to subdivide a piece of his backyard off or mm -hmm. something of that nature. Sure. So he can live his life the way he wants until he, dies or either sell. way yeah yeah okay mm -hmm. and again like a, like i brought up uh is it going to change the, the the amount of property taxes that he pays it i think it would still i mean i think it would still be assessed as a as a it's a residential use um and that wouldn't that would not change it would still remain a residential use Well, I can see supporting consistency as long as the guy can live the life the way he wants to, as long as he doesn't make any moves. Yeah, I, I mean, at, at this at this stage, our recommendation has been to retain the R one on on that property, which oh. is is different. Mm -hmm. That's what's in place now. It's different from the surrounding area. So maybe in the future. If you wanted to be R five, mm -hmm. so do you all? Do you all want to take a a vote on these? Yeah, particularly these three recommendations here. Yeah, it's fine with me. Any objections to taking the vote? Matt? Anybody have any other questions? Could you point once more to the three that we're voting on? This is the the um the one that the owner had requested C one. We're recommending retain R5. This owner had requested mixed use residential. We're recommending retain the RLD zoning. And then this is not a change in zoning. It would be a change in planned land use to retain okay. the existing zoning. All right, ready. <laughs> All those in favor of accepting OPC's recommendations for those three properties, please raise your hand. Okay. All right. All those opposed? Let me take my hand down. All those opposed? Whoops, wait a minute. I didn't lower my hand. Oh. <laughs> so everybody? Sorry, I can't I have to scroll over to see who it's. Ron, Ron, did you did you did you have a um were you Opposing I, the. I agree. My hand is slow because I'm actually on the mark thing. <laughs> oh. Okay. All right, that works. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, from here, I'll move you over to BNA Boulevard, right across from Marley Middle School. Um, in this area, we had. We had a, a zoning request, GBN 18, that's um, 7719 BNA Boulevard. The applicant had requested C4 zoning up from C1, um, and the request for C4 zoning, zoning was for them to be able to store food service vehicles and equipment. Um, we spoke with our, our zoning folks and um, confirmed that C1 zoning, um, which they have currently, that permits outside storage as 
accessory to permitted uses for up to 15% of the um, allowed lot coverage. So they, they should be able to, to do some of that storage of their food service vehicles and equipment within their existing C1 zoning. Um, but I think kind of the bigger question along this corridor is similar to the some of the same conversations that we had on, uh, was it Furnace Branch further to the north, where our recommendation in this case is is to retain the C1 zoning here. But there are there are two areas of C4 zoning already. Um, I, again, we felt like this little node of commercial area ought to remain primarily local commercial. So more C1, don't expand C4 zoning a whole lot in this area. Um, we felt like that was kind of the character that this area should be to serve this, this local neighborhood immediately behind it. Um, so that's kind of the same conversation that we had up on Furnace Branch. And you all might um, disagree. I think as a group, most of you sort of felt um, more comfortable with intensifying uses uh, on the other corridor. And you may feel the same way here. So I'll, I'll point that out. Um, further Further north of this, though, um, this GBN um, 118, I, I just want to point out the, the web app that you were looking at. It incorrectly noted that we were recommending C3 on this property, and we're, we're actually not. We're recommending R5. These are some newly built homes and, and a correction to the planned land use. And so because those are new homes, we're recommending R5. Um, on on these and then aligning the planned land use um, in that area. These others are are just cleaning up the the uh, alignment of zoning with parcel lines. So that's that's the rest of what you're seeing here. Um, and that's that's this little corridor here. Um, from here, we can talk about that, or if I can. The, can we talk the about last... that for just a second? Yes, sure. Um, the one that's right across from the school, can you make it show us what you were showing before? It seems to me that if you've got a lot of kids in that area and you're talking about storing food service trucks, that doesn't seem like a nice match. You know, it seems like lots of stuff could happen on a lot like that near a school. And um so I'm not feeling real comfortable with that idea. If I had mm -hmm. a kid going to Marley Elementary, I wouldn't want a lot with food service trucks stored on it. It just seems like an opportunity for lots of stuff to happen around kids. Okay. Are there any other thoughts on this area? I'm trying to pull up the street view if that would help. Patrick, the only thing that looks weird, and maybe this is, uh, maybe it's just how the map's coming out. The, see that you got that red area, and you got that one little like pan hand handle going up there. What is that? Just oh, this? Yeah, it, that's in the right of way. It, it's it's in the street. It okay. It actually, doesn't matter, and it should okay. be. Okay. If this goes to R five, I think that'll be a cleanup. That that will also go to R five, but it's it's the street. Okay, thank you. Good question. Um, this is the site that we're looking at. So uh, this is the applicant site and this is the scale along that roadway. And then of course the school behind us. Um, actually, it's this one. So anyway. Um, so they would take down the house and store food service trucks there? No, I'm guessing it's the garage next door. Mm -hmm. If you look at it, it still has a lot. It already has storage all the way back to the end of the community land. So some of those lots are houses on each side, and some of them go all the way back to the side street behind it. So they're already doing it. I mean, if you do an aerial, it's got a ton of, of storage in the back mm -hmm. behind 7719. 7721 is a C4 use, correct? It's the old service center. Um, to, the, to the south? It is south, yeah. 
It is, yeah. So that's C four. Right. But there's no real there's no real screening for seventy seven nineteen from their neighbors on whatever road that is behind it. Cedar Drive. Cedar, so yeah. The houses that face when you come down Cedar, you got residential housing facing the back mm -hmm. of seventy seven nineteen that so is here's requested C four. Yeah, this is the back of it here. Yeah. On on yeah. Cedar yeah. Cedar Drive, yeah. And if we just kind of look around, this is a an otherwise stable neighborhood immediately behind. If I was one of those neighbors, I wouldn't like that. But mm -hmm. and that was it's, kind of go ahead. It's terrible for um seventeen, fifteen, seventeen, and nineteen Cedar Avenue or Cedar Drive to face the back of those properties. Mm -hmm. So if they go to C4, mm -hmm. if they went to, would they, if it were given C3 or C4 for the outside storage, do they have to put up any kind of screening under the C4 versus right now they're just doing it anyway? Um, there, there is a screening requirement when there's, a, when a use is developed adjacent to a residential use. Um, I cannot tell you what that is off the top of my head though. But yes, there are some buffering requirements. Yeah, the only thing that would be nice is that um, the houses on Cedar, whether, I mean, they have C1 right now, right? The, um, the, the property, 7719, has C1? It does, yes. Yeah. So That's there's right. a commercial operation there. It's just yes. a matter of they're allowed to have outside storage. Correct. So it's just a shame for the houses on Cedar, even in its current state. But the C1 does allow them to store. We said that earlier, right? And OPZ up is to, C1? Yeah, up to a certain amount. I think 15% of the allowed lot coverage, which, which may be, that may be, um, it may be that they need more than what you see here with some of these these trucks and such. I don't know that. I'm just, I, I don't know. I haven't calculated for that. I just, I think our, our main thinking was um, similar to our thinking on Furnace Branch. This, this area really, because of the proximity of the neighborhood behind it, kind of limiting the intensity of commercial uses here um, to serve a more local neighborhood. And um, again, this this is not a, a major roadway like Ritchie Highway. So not expanding the C4 on this roadway was, was our thinking. Yeah, I think that would be a good decision in my own opinion. But I know the group kind of felt differently than we did um, in in other cases. So yeah, with the first branch, we had mixed opinions, is what I recall. Yeah, and Kristen, first, you have your it had a lot more a um, lot more commercial development on it than B and A in that area because mm -hmm. it's still mixed in with houses. I mean, the yeah. two houses to the north of the property we're talking about. Aren't they? What are they? They are they zoned? Mm -hmm. They are one north. They're C one, right? All of, yeah. So C one, and then still, there's no demand. They're still being used as houses. Seventy seven, seventeen, this, and seven fifteen. There's still yeah, a house. this looks like a house. Yeah, right. So no, and then that's that, our applicant. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then the Patrick. other ones. Uh, yes. Sorry. Yes. I don't know how to raise my. <laughs> uh, I did just want to mention because it's it, people have been asking a little bit about the coverage. So what is allowed in C one is up to fifteen percent of the allowable lot coverage, and so the allowable lot coverage on a C one lot is seventy five percent. Fifteen percent of seventy five percent would be eleven percent essentially of the total lot that could potentially be covered, and it would have to be. Um, that could potentially be stored on, and it would have to be directly related to an allowed use on the site. 
So you can't store anything that's not related to the actual commercial use of the property. And Kristen, you've had your hand up for a while, and I apologize. I don't. I don't no. always see it, but no, that's please. okay. Um, I, I I am supportive of not changing it to a C four, but I think my my question really is in the fact of this seems to have come up um, over several of our meetings that we have people who are looking to store their equipment, um, mm -hmm. and I don't recall if there's anything in the county's plan, but for us to be business friendly, if we have a lot of small businesses who store either work equipment or trucks or anything, is there a storage facility that the county would consider, you know, creating a large lot that people could rent spaces as opposed to parking their trucks in their, you know, in their driveways um, or in the, you know, in those cases, the back behind a house having refrigerated vehicles or whatever. Um, is there something that the county could might think of or use different property um, that would alleviate this kind of zoning question? I haven't I haven't heard conversations about that idea in particular, but it's it's an interesting one that I'm I'm making a note of. Um, yeah, the, but you're go the ahead. Pro the problem with that is that if you're going if you ask to that's really just another cost to the business owner. So you got to keep you got to keep that in mind to say, hey, why don't you go rent some more rent some property somewhere else? So and th so then we, then your expenses go up. Yeah, un understood. I mean, it or it gets denied in a setting like this. So that you know, mm -hmm. from uh, putting it on your property, I to totally agree. And you know, whether there's county grants or other things, I mean, we learned a lot in our first couple of sessions about ways in which the county can support small business. Um, uh, as well as residents alike. So just think was thinking outside the box here. Thank you. You know, even if you pay for a parking space, there are probably are costs related to having to have land that you store vehicles on. I mean, I think you're going to pay either way. Mm -hmm. And also, even though they're saying the reason they want to do it is for storing vehicles. There's so much more that C4 opens up to. So I think we seem to mm -hmm. be in consensus, consensus on this property. And the last couple, maybe we're up for a vote on these ones. Yeah, great. Let's vote. Alyssa, you want to take it? Oh, yeah. Oh, I can do it. <laughs> no, well, if Patrick points them out again, I know the one on... Uh, Marley well, Neck, right across from the school, there was a couple more, or did you have even a, a few more that are consistent? Well, they, this was the main one. This was the application. Um, our recommendation was to retain C1 and not not do the C4. This one was a, a correction that is in that will be put into the web app where we're actually recommending R5. That's consistent with what's on the ground there. And the, the remainder of these are kind of alignment corrections and consistency changes related to OS zoning and and other alignment with uh, what was adopted with plan 2040. Ready to vote. All right, team. Um, on the properties that were just listed here and considering application 0018 and the consistency changes, all in favor of OPZ's recommendations as just outlined, please raise your hand. Okay. It looks like we have 10, 11. And then all opposed. Which is weird how it bounces back and forth. Yeah, I wish everybody like it would keep it in one place. So it looks like two opposed to the OPZ recommendation. Yes. Or is it just one? Oh, I'm seeing one. Okay. Michael and Michelle, were you opposed? Okay. So two. two. Okay. All right. All right. So I think we have majority consensus there. Thanks. Um. From here, I'll move you to 
Marley Station Mall. And this, I mean, we, we've all talked about Marley Station Mall. I think um, I, our recommendation here has been to, we're, and I think that this is actually not what was shown in the in the web app, but we're, it's currently zoned C3 um, zoning and we're recommending maintain that existing C3 zoning for the, for the mall itself. This, this whole area, let me back up a little bit. This is in the, uh, the critical corridor development policy area. This is the only part of this area that we've been talking about that is within the critical corridor development policy area. But again, that is, that is not a, um, a targeted mm -hmm. growth area. So therefore it's not, targeted for investment, targeted for density and that sort of thing. So to to put it in the targeted growth area, we're actually recommending that we apply that new um, mixed mixed use development policy area overlay to this to to the mall property and its out parcels um, here. So that will that'll put this area in the in the mixed use um, development policy area overlay. We're recommending retain the existing C3 zoning and actually change the planned land use on, on this property to mixed use planned land use. What that does is that would set it up for um, potentially applying a, a new mixed use zone. I think I had mentioned in a previous meeting that there's going to be an overhaul of our mixed use zones as, as was uh, kind of directed by plan 2040 that work is going on now um, and if we if we can apply mixed use planned land use here then that would set this up for applying one of the mixed use zones when those come online and are adopted um, that could then be applied here I so that's support that. I think that's a great idea and that's that's really our recommendation in this area the remainder of of these recommendations over that I didn't talk about over here, but they're really um, again consistency changes with what's been adopted and planned land use um, from Plan Twenty Forty. Um, that's it in this area. Is there is there more to talk about, or should I go ahead and wrap up because I have a handful of things just to point out to you in this area below Route 100. Do we have any more questions though about Marley Station Mall and kind of that Southern area? I have a quick question. This is Emily. Sure, um, please. How, what is the timing or anticipated timing to get the MXD zones online? Our, Sarah, you may know a little bit more about this, but I think the zoning division, I think you all are working on this as we speak and are hoping for what, the end of the summer? that there may be something that could go to council. Am I correct on that? Does that sound correct? But I don't oh, I think we're on that. I'm sorry, you were frozen for a minute. Oh, could you sorry, say you everything were that you just said again? <laughs> <laughs> Beyond, I think the last update that I received that it was they were proposing to present in June sometime. Let me see if okay. I can find that. Um, but I have not been updated anything beyond that. And that was right before our last meeting. Let me see if I can find a date. They're trying okay. to make a June 17th be... introduction. June 17th, Christina says. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so I have have she hasn't updated me after that. So I think that's the last date that we we're aware of. So that makes sense. Would you have to wait is, until like the next round to get to rezone to MXD? I mean, like in however many years, I can't remember how many years till the next round of this, or would it be like no. an off cycle thing? No, I mean, the amendments to the mixed use zoning districts are intended to be brought online so that regions one, three, and nine, and five, six, and eight can take advantage of them. Okay, that makes sense. Thank you. Um, any other questions 
about that area? No. Should I should I go ahead and finish out this area below Route 100 here? Yeah. And then take a vote. I, this is actually a very simple area. If I can find the if I can find the first one. Um, G oh it, it's uh gbn 21 that's on um bear with me one second while I, I find this this is this is one we did not support and i'll explain why in a second here we go um this this was an application that i i, I think they were it's it's within a townhome community one person owns a townhome, submitted an application. Um, the current zoning here is R15, but the, the request was actually that the community of Gray's Luck, which is this townhome community, actually be moved from the Glen Burnie um, community into Millersville. This really wasn't a zoning request at all, but um, it, it did not get pulled when I when I spoke to the or when I reached out to the applicant. We we're recommending no change to zoning or to the community boundary because the community changing the community boundary would actually involve a number of these other properties as well. And it just it didn't seem to make sense to us. And I didn't get any any response um, when I reached what, out. What would motivate somebody to make that kind of request? I think they were I I, I think they just didn't no to send an email instead of a comp zoning application or something. I mean, it, it I'm not sure. I just wonder to what their motivation honest. was to have their neighborhood kind uh, of renamed. I, I did too, frankly, <laughs> I don't have an answer for you. Um, But, but zoning isn't, again, it's not the right tool for whatever it is that they were looking for. Otherwise, um, there are a number of staff recommendations to that are all related to planned land use in this area. So, um, a lot, um, th there's planned land use changes that align with the planned land use with, with what's on the on the ground and anticipated to remain over the 20 year time horizon, and then a lot of uh, several planned land use changes that. Um, align the planned land use with the correct um, parks and open space planned land use, but actually don't change um, zoning. And then there are a number of zoning consistency changes, and that's what you see outlined here. A lot of those are kind of aligning the, the um, zoning with property lines, the OS zoning that we talked about, um, and that kind of uh, cleanup. There are some townhomes that are in, let's see, I think it's, I think it's these in this area here uh, and also over here where we're recommending um, changing some of those townhome communities that are zoned commercially, changing them to their, you know, appropriate residential zone. So that's, that's it for the, for the region. Um, do you all have any questions on, on kind of this Southern Glen Burnie area or Marley Station Mall, or should we go ahead and take a vote on those? Let's take a vote. Take a vote. <laughs> all right. All right. All those in favor of accepting OPZ's recommendations for the properties just uh, mentioned, raise your hand. I'm, I don't know if did my hand appear. Yes. Yes. Okay. Good. I see everybody. And this is adding the overlay for the MXD on Marley Station as well. It is. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. All right. That looks like some if, if I can take two minutes and revisit one that we messed up on last time, but you all actually didn't say much at all about this. Up on um, just north of Glen Burnie Town Center, so off of Ritchie Highway, you turn right onto Dover Road. There's kind of that industrial area here. We mistakenly, and the, the web app currently shows that this, um, which is an asphalt um, mixing plant, 
uh, right here. We mentioned that we were recommending W changing this from W1 to W3. We're actually recommending retaining the existing zoning of W1 on that. I just want to get that on the record because um, we misstated that last time that we talked or at the last meeting. Um, there would be some cleanup of some C4 zoning here, but otherwise we're recommending retain the W1. I think at the last meeting, you all voted to support our recommendation for W3. Um, we would we would pull this out of the the change recommendations and it would not appear as a as a as a zoning change except for this C4 alignment change. So I, so I just wanted to bring that up. So we don't have to revote about it. Um I I don't think it's necessary because it's going to be taken out of the our recommendation is going to be to retain the the W1 on the majority of that site. Okay. You might want to do a quick vote because on the notes it does say that we all agreed. Um Oh, uh, thank you for okay, to you're w1 right. To w3. So to change that note that we have to vote on or we're going to That's a good point. We should probably vote to be consistent with you guys to the W1. Okay. Good point. Um, so all those so, in favor, oh, go ahead. Do we want to take the vote now? Do you want to? I, I'd say, yeah, go ahead. CZR3 GBM 103. GBM 103. Yeah. And, and I guess the vote is to support or oppose the OPZ recommendation for W1 zoning, which is the primary zone on the property now. And that would be consistent with an asphalt plant, right? Because that's what it said before. Well, the, it go to the, w, the W3 would be consistent, but this one has an existing non-conforming designation that allows the use to continue, but without, without the more intensive W3 uses that would come online with changing to W3. So they can so, continue to operate under W1. Okay. So if we oppose it, we're just reversing what we did last week. Um, I, I think the new thing on the table is that OPZ is recommending W1, not W3. Okay. And so if you support that, then yeah, it would be eliminating your prior or reversing your prior recommendation for a W3. But what made OPZ change their recommendation? I guess I missed that part. It was a mistake. We 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 actually didn't change our recommendation. There was it, the the GIS was pulling information from the wrong cell on this, and it should have read W one. And in the moment, I was reading what was on the screen, and it was W three. <laughs> so that's okay. that's why. So are we going to vote? All right. Uh, all those in favor of accepting OPZ's recommendation, uh, the updated recommendation from OPZ, uh, raise your hand. OK. Great. All right. All those, this, did you, you got the count? I did, yes. All right, all those opposed? None. Good. Did I miss Rich? Did you vote? Yeah, I voted for it. Okay. Um, and that's that's all I had right now. The we kind of skipped last at the last meeting the whole Queenstown community discussion. Um I mentioned that we're going to mail out letters. We've done that. We are likely to have a meeting next week, but when um, when our draft recommended zoning map goes out, um, it will it'll need to say that the SAC has not had a chance to take a position one way or the other on that on that area. I just I want to get some more information and bring that back to you um, before we we deal with that. So. That is, that's all I have right now on, on these. Do, 
Do we want to go, um, since Mr. Hager talked about the two from the last meeting, did, did we want to revisit those or are we still? If we get paid overtime, we can reconsider. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, Jason and those. Alyssa, I'll leave that up to you all. Yeah, since since Mr. Hager came to the meeting, um, let's go ahead and take a look at those quickly. Um, I'm still sharing my screen, right? Let me. Yes. So, so the first one that he spoke about is just below Glen Haven uh, Cemetery. It's this um, gas station, GBN 00. zero zero six uh and if let me see give me one second to stop i see i think the if i remember correctly the request was for yeah here we go um it's currently zone c3 the request was for c4 the property has an approved special exception to allow the existing gas station to continue Mr. Hager spoke about, um, you know, the the limitations of that with um, with some of the larger gas station franchises and potential limitation that that may bring to um, any potential redevelopment of that. Let me see if I can pull it up in Street View if that helps. And if I recall, there was C four across the street. Is that correct? Yeah, there is. So this is this is the property that we're talking about. And the request is for C4. Yeah, the request is for C4, which, like you said, is across the street. Um, the other three sides would remain C3 there. And I will say OPZ hasn't, we haven't had an internal conversation about this yet. So I, I don't have a new recommendation or know if we would change our recommendation yet. Um, but that's, that's that one. And then if I can skip down to the other application that he brought up and was talking about, it is, I believe this one, GBN 17, this is that, uh, I believe it was a, a snow cone site currently, um, well, if I could ask one question about the about the 006. So if I understand okay. correctly, C4 is across one side of the street and then C3 is across the other side of the street. Is that right? Because if I'm looking at the map correctly to the... Yeah, so directly across the street is, is C4 and then kind of diagonally. So across 6th Avenue, which is that side street, mm -hmm. that is C3. But where they are on that side of the street, that's all, if I'm looking at where, where your mouse is, that's all C3 currently. C3, yes. Now, th this is the street, so that, that doesn't much matter. But, um, yeah, it's C3 on on the north and the east, and then south across the street, C4. And Patrick, I think it's now, it's, it's kind of a patchwork, I think, is it the is. way to find it, of mm -hmm. C3, C4. It, there isn't as much of a rhyme or reason of... Oh, yeah, that's a good point. Now... But if you'll recall, when we were just talking about Furnace Branch and and uh, BNA Boulevard and where I had said we kind of felt like local commercial was more appropriate on those and save the C4 for Ritchie Highway. Well, this is Ritchie Highway. So um, now I'm I'm saying that without saying that OPZ is changing its recommendation right now. Again, we need to have a conversation. But if you all are prepared to rethink that, you can... You can do that. You can change your I would recommendation. I feel more on comfortable this. having OPZ have a conversation about it, and then we, if you need us to have a really short meeting or something or email, then we can revisit it. Are you okay with okay. that? If if the rest of you feel that way, we can we can do that. Yeah, I I only remember a little bit of the conversation where we knew that it was C4 across the way, but we also knew it was C3 in all other mm -hmm. directions and with the location right next to the cemetery. Mm -hmm. I think that was brought up. Yeah. Everything north of the cemetery C4, correct? It, it is, yeah. Okay. 
And then on, is that the policy area that you wanted, that the county was recommending to be more automotive than a mixed use area? Um, yeah, so correct? currently the, the town center policy area um, extends north of Georgia Avenue. I believe it encompasses this area, but we're recommending pulling that town center policy area back and, and stopping it at Georgia Avenue. So that's that's one of the things that we had talked about too. And I'm trying to find that layer. Yeah, yeah, this is the existing town center policy area. It does go up and incorporate that, but we were recommending pull that town center cool. back back to here and put this in the critical corridor. I mean, yeah, there could be other C4 uses other than a gas station possibly, but um, mm -hmm. I mean, it brings it in to conform. Even though it's conform, it's a special exception in C3, it would be a C4. And I mean, you could possibly, as Mr. Hager stated, you could possibly get a, a um, nicer redevelopment piece there than a special exception from a... Um, from a different gas state from other gas stations mm -hmm. a mm -hmm. mom and pop station versus a national franchise station I, the gas. yeah and i i do think it's an i do think it's a fair point um does it limit redevelopment potential and if so do you do you want a gas station that doesn't get redeveloped and modernized and upgraded um so it, it's up to you all if you all want to talk about this now take a revote or if you want us to have an internal conversation and bring it back to you perhaps after uh it, at our next meeting which will be a while but um we can do that it's up to you all i would i would feel more comfortable if opz had thought about it first and then we thought about it that's fine. And if we could do it, I don't think it's something that we need to necessarily schedule a meeting for. If it's okay to do it, uh, do the vote via via email. Might need to check on that. We we don't yeah, want to violate think we can, open meetings. I don't think we can do a vote without having an official meeting. I see. It'll be a short Zoom meeting. I would be um, okay with changing what we recommended last time and going with C4. Now, if anybody else wanted to talk it's about doing delivery. it before OPZs, um, maybe changing their mind. Yeah. So why don't we start there and see if we have the, the two thirds that we, that, that we need to move forward or if it needs to go to a um, OPZ reevaluation. Um, okay. So so all those in favor of of um, accepting the landowner's recommendation for C4 on this property, which would be a change to our original recommendation of C3, raise your hand. I see eight. Uh, sorry, I um, I'm confused about. I I wasn't at the last meeting, so I am missing that part of the conversation. But is it? I guess I'm. This is the first time I feel like we've been asked to reopen something, and I'm not sure that mm -hmm. we understand what that. Could anyone come at any point and ask us to reopen anything from any meeting? I guess I don't quite understand how the fairness of the process works with reopening and. Mm -hmm that reopening um any thoughts on that it's it's this is christina pompa it's really up to you all whether or not you want to reconsider something but i will tell you that there is a time frame for the process so there will not be an opportunity to continue to reconsider and reconsider and reconsider mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess I'm with Sarah. I was actually in the meeting, but the the ask to reconsider when we're not reconsidering others. Um, and at the time we had spent enough time deliberating this that we came up with a decision. So unless there was something 
super compelling, which I'm not sure I just, I perhaps I just don't understand the compelling reason if they already have a special exception and they are at C3, what that is. I agree with Christian and Sarah. I just don't like the precedent. That's fair. Fair. Absolutely. I was at the last meeting, so I'm on the same page as Sarah, and <laughs> I also feel the same way as Kristen about the fairness, and also feel the same way about OPZ presiding over it before we do, feeling more comfortable with that. Okay. So, from what I'm hearing in the comments, I feel like we have enough the opposition right now to at least table the vote on moving forward with changing our recommendation. Um, heard some recommendations to ask OPZ to to take a look take a look at it. Um, so right now we're between the options of stick with our current recommendation of C three, or request that OPZ take a look at it, which would require another vote and then another meeting. Right. And or it could be addressed at our final meeting um, after once we get public comments after we've put out a, a draft um, zoning map draft recommended zoning map we can gather a slew of public comments on on all of our recommendations and we'll have others to discuss with you as well and we can add this into the bunch then yeah, so that, that might like a better plan. plan yeah okay because because at that point, if I'm understanding you correctly, everyone will have an opportunity to um, ask for a reevaluation or express concern. And there will be new applications that may come in at that point too. Not as many as we've had, but yeah, I don't probably, anticipate that. That's probably a, a, a fair way forward. Okay. Any objection, anyone? I still have my hand raised. So lower my hand. <laughs> All right. Seeing none. All right, okay. Patrick. It for um that that was it for the land use and zoning and policy area changes that we needed to go over with you. Um in terms of other business, um, I don't, well, I do have one other thing, but I think first we need to move to approve the prior meeting notes. And Desiree, I'll let you, I, we, we had a couple of corrections that we need to make, I think, to the last set of meeting notes. And then yeah. I had something I wanted to say as well. So go, go Desiree. Okay. And yeah, in the last set of meeting notes, um, it was on page three under the Point Pleasant Peninsula. We had like four of the comp zoning applications just um, numbered incorrectly. Instead of it saying um, GBN, it said SBN for Severn. It should just be GBN. So it's, the numbers are correct, but it was CZR3, SBN 0008, 9, 10, and 11. But these just need to change. And I'm and I was going to actually recommend something that the other regions had had been putting in their meeting notes um, following their discussions of of zoning and such. It's a statement that just says um, note that not all recommendations are listed. A full list containing all consistency changes as well as staff and other recommendations will be available for public review in the coming months at the end of each community discussion unless otherwise noted a consensus was reached regarding consistency and other recommendations prior to moving to the next area so i i would actually recommend if you all are comfortable with that putting that um at the end of each discussion for the last uh what is it three sets of meeting notes and and the one the meeting notes for today as well just to kind of say that we talked about all of these communities and such okay okay do we need to so we you mentioned a vote to approve the meeting minutes do we need to vote the for the changes to the prior meeting minutes yes yeah. 
right. So, um, or, or just, or, or really, I think just a vote as amended. Yeah. If you okay. take those as amendments. Yeah. So all those in favor of accepting the meeting minutes as amended, um, raise your hand. Raise my hand. Is this for the set of all three meeting minutes? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, I wasn't at one of the meetings, but I don't have any concerns with the meetings I was at. So I'll defer to everyone. <laughs> Um, do we have the count? That was everyone. How many? Anyone opposed? Yeah. Oh. Oh, wait a minute. Let me lower my hand. Yeah. <laughs> then you said opposed. Okay. All right. All right. Anybody um, who would like to go to dinner, raise your hand. <laughs> I would. Let me, let me cover one more thing and then give me 30 seconds. Um, our next meeting is currently scheduled for July 16th. I, I would like to put a, a poll out to see if we could consider moving that to a Tuesday in August, actually. The reason why is that the, the public input period that um, is that we're going to be putting out our draft zoning map is it's now scheduled to go past that July 16th date. And so I want to be able to get all of the public comments in and share any recommended changes with you all. Um, so for that reason, I'd like to recommend that we um meet either you know august 6th 13th or, or maybe 20th i think the last week of august is when school starts so maybe avoid that but if i can just put a poll out to you all after after this meeting or maybe tomorrow and get a sense for if that would work for you all but in general does that sound doable to you all are there any concerns with that as long as i'm in air conditioning i'm fine <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> okay. All right. I'll be in touch about that. I don't have other announcements right now. All right. Congratulations, everybody. You did a great job. All this right. was intense. You all did do a great job. I really appreciate your input. Yeah. All right. If there's nothing else, I move to adjourn the meeting. <laughs> Is, that's a second. As one shepherd said to the other, let's get the flock out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Y'all take care. Thanks so much. Okay. Have a good night. Bye. Thanks.